This is Annie. Annie wants to build an online store. She has a store where she sells a ton of items and she wants to start selling them online. But she doesn't know how to build an online store, so she talks with her friend Bobby. Hi Bobby. Hi Annie. All the products I want to sell are listed on this Google Sheet. Can you please help me create an online store? Okay, there is a tool that can create an online store right out of your Google Sheets. Great. I want something that I can manage easily with Google Sheets. I don't want to hire a web developer. Gotcha. Here is a demo store. Yeah, this is exactly what I was looking for. Any changes to your sheet will be updated on the spot. Try it now. Got it. The product that Bobby suggested to Annie is called Store.Link. It converts your Google Sheet to a fully fledged online store in a matter of seconds. It has a ton of features and this is the product that we are going to be exploring today in this video. So without wasting any time, let's get started. The product works as a Google Workspace add-on. So you need to install the add-on using your Google account. In our channel, we have discussed a couple of other add-on products such as WatchForm, Store Locator, and even Form to Chatbot. So this is one similar item. So once it's installed, we will start by creating a new sheet in a new tab, sheet.new. That actually creates a new spreadsheet in your Google Drive. Let's give it a name, Annie's Store. Under Extensions, you will find the add-on Sheet to Shop. Start from a template, let's say Electronics. This will take a bit of time to create two sheets. One is Products, the other is Orders. Once the sheets are ready, you will be asked to give a name of your store. Here we will give Annie. The second step, choose a store currency. They provide over 120 currencies for you to choose from. And the third step is where you do you want to receive orders. They, this includes WhatsApp as well. Publish the store and it will say the store is ready. Along with that, it will give you a few quick tips. Tips like how to upload product images, how to add product variants, and how to integrate payments with the store. Open the store to see how it looks right now. What you're seeing right now is the default electronics template that store.link provides. Let's go back. Take a minute to study the content of this sheet. We don't really need to use this data, but we need to understand how they have created the columns and in which format we have to enter the data in order to create the store. We'll delete the remaining content and just study the first row. They have the product name, actual price of the product, then you can give discounted price, product description, category, color brand tag, stock, number of items of the product, availability is the item out of stock, thumbnail is the feature image, and the additional images are image one, image two, and so on. Similarly, they have an orders sheet, which we will be seeing when we place an order. Now, let's delete the first row and start by adding Annie's first item that he wants to sell, and that is a MacBook Air. We'll type the price, actual price, and the price at which you plan to sell, that's a discounted price. I already have the description of MacBook Air, so I'll just paste it. Category for MacBook Air is electronics. I have, uh, sorry, Annie has a silver MacBook Air of brand Apple, of course. It's a used one, and there are five pieces. We want to show the item on the store. Now, coming to thumbnail. In order to upload the product image, you have to go to extensions, sheet to shop, and then there's an option upload image. This will open up an upload window where you can drag and drop or just click and select the item that you want to show as the feature image. Wait for the image to get uploaded. And if you notice, it will show you the cell value shows image of the uploaded URL, which is a Google Drive URL. We'll repeat the same process for the secondary image, upload image, 
again select the image second image for macbook and uh, yes that's how we have the second image for macbook now let's just take a look at the store it will have one item a used macbook air with the thumbnail that we just added product name brand color the actual price is slashed out and it shows the discounted price so far it looks good now it's time to add the remaining products that Annie wants to sell. So I already have the list of items ready. I'm just going to copy paste the items. iPhone 13 with a stock of 10. And then baggy low jeans with a stock of 20. Sony headset with a whooping stock of 495. I'm not sure where Annie got that many Sony headsets. Leather bag from H&M with a stock of just three. Now remember, I used the upload image to upload the images for all these products, thumbnail image one that you're seeing. Give the store a reload to see how the items look on the store. There were five items and we can see all the five items. So that's how easy it is to create the store. Now it is time to explore the settings of the store. Now this is where we will see all the features that store.link provides starting with design header do you want to show the name of the store in the header right now it's turned on it says annie next the header logo it's the default logo of store.link let's delete that and we will here upload a face of annie you can upload your own store logo or business logo now click on save and see if the change was reflected yes the icon the the logo header logo has changed banner section is what follows below the nav bar this is annie's business store you can set a subtitle collection of items curated by annie there is a toggle switch to completely disable the banner as well uh, if you want, you can also uh, upload your own banner image. Once you're done, you can click on save. And then go to the store and see if the changes were reflected. Yes, we have a banner with the text that we have set. Moving on to the next thing is the product card. This is the button text that appears you know, below each item. You, you can change the call to action text as you choose content page product detail page now when we look at the home page we see the add to cart button right there on the home page which allows for a fast checkout when we turn on the product detail page this changes the workflow click on save go to the store and give it a reload the add to cart button disappears instead each product gets a detailed page of its own with all the details you can see the images with much more clarity price title we even see the product description that we added there is also a product specification table which we will discuss soon the next setting was filter settings here we have one filter which is price filters can be seen on the home page here we have the price filter if you want to add additional filters, you will be adding the name of the column in the drop down menu. You select the color column and click on save and then go to the home page again, give it a reload and you will see that the color filter has been added and you can filter items based on color. The next setting that we are going to discuss is product information. Product information was a small table that we saw inside the product detail page here we had one single item which was brand so you will see a single row we can add more rows by giving mentioning the column right here in the drop down menu if we want we can add new columns inside the sheet which will be shown in the drop down menu and we can select them as well here we are going to click on save and give this page a reload and we see that the new row has been added which mentions the color of the product as product information now variance before we get into it let me show you an example of what is variance 
In this example, the iPhone model has two variants, gray and silver color. So inside the sheet, we will be giving the product with the same name, but the color of the product will be different in the sheet. When you give this information in the sheet and mention color as the variant column in the settings, we will be able to show this product in the store with the two different options. So let's try to recreate the same right here. Here I'm going to make a copy of the iPhone 13 row in my sheet. I'll paste the information. And then I will change the color from blue to black. I will also change the price information for the black iPhone 13. Set the price to $8.99 as the actual price and the discounted price will I will set it to $7.49. Now if I were to look at the store, give it a reload, I will find two variants of the same iPhone 13. There is a blue color and a black color and the price also changes. The product specification table also changes. I will also show you one more example of how to add variants by adding a new column. In this sheet, you can see there is a product baggy low jeans. What if baggy low jeans came in three different sizes? So what I'm going to do is first add a new column name size. And for this entry, I'm going to set the size as small. Next, I'll add two additional rows. And then I'll copy paste the same data into the sheets. In variants, remember, it is very important that the products have the same name. And then I'll change the size to medium and large. I'll keep the stock and other factors as the same. Perhaps I will change the cost of the large one to $55. You can change description and images if you want. Now I'll go to the store and then I will see if I was able to add the variants for baggy low jeans. Unfortunately, we cannot see it. This is because the size column was not mentioned as a variant column. So I got to go to store settings, go to content under variants. I have to add the size column. So now the store knows to group the products together based on the size column. Now we have uh, the size, small, medium, and large. And when we click on large, we can actually see that the price changes. So this is how you add variants of one single product. Under content, we have one more settings, which is pages and link. You can add links to the navbar. And in, in the links can be added in three ways. We'll add, show you all the three options. So we're going to be adding first the Instagram link for Annie. And we will set the option for the link to be opened in a new window and click on add the next option we will uh, set the link to be opened in, uh, in the same window and here we will provide the Pinterest uh, URL for any you can add whichever link you want for your store and then open this link in the same window and click on add and finally for the embedded in store option we will add a store locator demo. So there is a product called locatestore.com which helps you to create store locator. So we have taken their demo link and here we are setting the store route which is to be shown on our store and click on add and then finally save. Let's see how it actually looks on our store. We have the three links. The Instagram link opens in a new tab. The Pinterest link opens inside the same window and the locate store visit my store option that opens right inside the store and we can see the store route that we have set as well next in settings we have payments before we discuss payments let's just see what annie is up to annie is busy building her store so oh and she's quite happy about it too let's just get ahead with what we were doing we are going to place an order in Annie's store. I ordered an iPhone 13 and we will also place an order for Sony headset. And when the user clicks on checkout, 
the customer is going to see the checkout page as well as a checkout form. Let the customer be James. James at the gmail.com. Next, James gives his phone number. He provides the delivery address wherever he lives, home, office, wherever he wants the delivery. Next, James is going to see the order total for iPhone 13 and Sony headset. And he clicks on checkout and he gets an order summary with the order number. And he says the payment method is cash. If you go to the sheet, uh, we will see the order information right inside Google Sheet. Under the order sheet, the order number 1001 with James details and the items that he placed order for are recorded, including the order total. And we can also show you that the stock quantity has decreased. iPhone 13 has nine items left and Sony headset, which was 495 in number is 494. One item has been sold. Now, if we were to actually enable payments, cash is a default payment, so it's always on. If you want to accept payments through PayPal or using customer's credit or debit card, that is also possible. Here we will add your PayPal account email address so that you can accept payments to your PayPal account. There's an option to set the button color. If you're familiar with Stripe and you have a Stripe merchant account, you can connect Stripe with store.link. You need to provide your publishable key and your secret key right here. This will allow you to accept payments through card. We'll add that information and click on save. Now, if we place an order for, let's say, MacBook Air, and if we see the checkout page, we see there are three options. The customer has the option to choose card and then make the payment. This will take them to the Stripe billing page. Similarly, if they choose PayPal, it will take them to a PayPal checkout page. And that's how you add payments in store.link. Next, checkout settings. You can get order information inside WhatsApp. That's what this is used for. You can get email notifications, which kind of looks like this. It will have all the information about the order. Uh, the same information that we saw inside the orders sheet. And then collect orders in sheet that is by default turn on. And you can add custom form fields in your checkout page. Here we will add a new question, something like, is this a gift item? And we will set the field type as drop down and add the options yes or no. They can be comma separated and then click on add. We will save the new custom field that we added and we'll just go to the, our store and see how it looks. By the way, you can immediately see that a new column has been added in the orders sheet by the same custom field. We go to our cart and we give the cart a reload. We can see the new custom field has been added successfully. You can add other custom fields for your store as required. Next up, general settings, you can set the name of the store. Changing of the currency is not allowed once the store is created. You can, of course, contact the store.link team to request the change in currency. You can change the domain. You can even request custom domain by contacting store.link team. Translation settings. Store.link also enables you to translate your store to any language you want. Here we have translated to Spanish, Espanol. And if we give the store a reload, we can see all the text components of the store has been translated. This is actually step one. You need to definitely make sure of uh, the product information that is stored inside the sheet that is also translated. So if you go over to your sheet, 
you can see the description part or maybe the product name itself or other information they need to be translated for example this macbook air description this is still in english you will need to translate that to spanish also in the cart page you can see the checkout fields they are still in english this has to be translated explicitly by going to store settings and then you will open checkout you can edit each of these fields and then translate them to spanish or whichever language you want so that's how you can completely translate your online store into the language of your choice here let's revert back to english and click on save now moving on to seo this is how you make your online store better indexed for search engines like google and bing you can add your meta title you can add a meta description there's an option to add the favicon right here and also the meta image they have also recommended the dimensions that you need to add the images in once you're done making the changes click on save integrations gives you the option to inject custom code this means you will be able to add your google analytics code your facebook pixel here we are adding a chatbot to the store chatbot that was made using collect.chat now if we reload the store here we can see the chatbot made in collect.chat appears on the right corner so that's how you use inject custom code all right we have gone through the entire feature set of store.link obviously since this is a google sheet you have the collaboration feature where you can share this google sheet with your team so that they can keep track of orders they can update products update the stock quantity and much more there is one more cool feature about store.link what if you want to add more images for your products how do you do that you just need to add a new column and give the title as image 3 with no spaces and if you want to add further images that will become image 4 image 5 and more you just need to use the upload image to add the product images so if you want to create a clothing website that you can do using store.link if you want to create a listing website to showcase your properties and renders that is also possible if you want to build a grocery store this is another demo here you can actually see the products that have gone out of stock in the demo and the ones that are available under sheet to shop extension when you click on share store you will see obviously the option to copy the link also they provide you a qr code which you can paste on your actual store so there you have it annie is happy bobby is glad he could help all thanks to store.link